Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the derivatives of inverse trig functions. Um, this is in section 3.5 in the text that we're using, which is the section on implicit differentiation. So if you're still struggling with implicit differentiation, look at section 3.5. There's lots of examples. They talk about it all. Um, it's really good to look at. And it included, they talk about inverse trig functions, and that's because you use... Um, implicit differentiation to figure out what the derivatives of the inverse trig functions are. So it's really cool. It's a really good application of why this implicit stuff can be really useful. So for example, let's look at the derivative of y, which is the inverse sine of x, okay? So we want to know what the derivative of inverse sine of x is, right? The inverse trig function. Some people call it a sine, which is probably better than the negative one, right? Because remember, this is not equal to 1 over the sine of x. Um, this means it's an inverse function, not 1 over. It's bad notation. Really calling it a sine or arc sine would be better. But people do that all the time. So just make sure you understand. Keep that separate. Okay, we want to know what y prime is, right? We want to know the derivative of this. So here's what you do. It's super cool. Um, you take the sine of both sides. Okay, sine of inverse sine cancels. That's the whole point of inverse functions, they cancel. So if we take the sine of both sides, we get sine of y is equal to sine of inverse sine cancels is just equal to x. Okay, that's just the definition of inverse sine. Now you take the derivative implicitly. So let's do that. The derivative of sine of anything is cosine of that thing. So we get cosine of y. Then we say, then we multiply by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. The derivative of y is y prime, so times y prime. And again, I should put parentheses here to be clear of that. This y prime right is not what you're taking a cosine of, it's outside the parentheses. Um, and then the derivative of x is 1. We want y prime. So we just solve for y prime. So y prime is just 1 over cosine of y. And we're done, kind of, except that normally we want y prime as a function of x, not as a function of y. That's kind of awkward to have a function of y. So we need to solve for cosine of y. What, what is cosine of y? And this is a trick that you'll, we'll use a lot in Calc 2 um, when we're doing integrals, the same trick. And basically it's to draw the triangle. Okay, so I'm going to draw a right triangle. And we know that, let's see, cosine, if you have to remember, cosine of an angle cosine of an angle y, so we'll call this angle y, is um, caught another horse, so adjacent, adjacent another horse divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, um, cosine, oh, and then sine of y, sine of y is opposite over hypotenuse, the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Okay. We had here from our original thing that sine of y is x. Okay, sine of y is x. So sine of y is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so we can make that work if we make the opposite x and the hypotenuse 1. Then sine of y is x over 1, which is x, which makes it work. Now, what is the adjacent then? Well, let's see. 1 is hypotenuse, so the adjacent here, let's call the adjacent here, um, we know x squared plus the adjacent squared is equal to 1. So I'll call that a, I guess. x squared plus a squared is equal to 1. Or the adjacent is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this is the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, cosine then. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So cosine of y, and that's what we want down here, right? We want cosine of y is equal to the adjacent which is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by hypotenuse, which is 1. So it's just square root of 1 minus x squared. So this is y prime is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we're done. That is the derivative of inverse sine. y prime, which is the derivative of inverse sine, is the square root of 1 minus x squared. 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Who would have thought, right? So it's really cool. It's like a backwards way of getting the derivative. Um, just by using inverse trig functions. And it works. Uh, sorry, by using um, 
implicit differentiation to find the derivative of an inverse trig function. Um, so we found the derivative of the inverse by taking the derivative of the normal one. It's kind of crazy, but it works, and that's right. That's how it works. All right, so the derivative of inverse sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, inverse sine of x. Now, let's do one more example. Let's do, co let's do tangent. We could do cosine. We can do all of them, but let's do tangent now. And I'm going to leave our, this thing up here because we're going to use it again. Okay, so let's say y is equal to the inverse tangent of x. Okay, just like before, take the tangent of both sides, get rid of that. So tangent of y is equal to x. Now we take the derivative um, implicitly. So derivative tangent, we already figured out was secant squared. So we have secant squared of y times, again, y prime, that's the implicit part, times the derivative of what's inside, which is y, so times y prime is equal to 1, just like before. Um, we want y prime. So y prime is 1 over secant squared of y. Secant squared is awkward. Um, secant is, see, there's no co in it, so it's the inverse of cosine. So it's 1 over secant squared is just cosine squared, because secant squared is 1 over cosine, 1 over, 1 over, yeah. So that's just cosine squared of y. Okay, here's y. Um, so first off, tangent of y is equal to x. Tangent is, I should have written that down, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of y, put a y there, am I on the board here? Yeah, just barely. Tangent of y is opposite divided by adjacent. And in this case, that's equal to x. So this is the opposite. Tangent of y is opposite x divided by the adjacent, which now is 1, because we want to be equal to x. So now what is hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is just 1 squared plus x squared. Or put the x first, so you just see the x. So x squared plus 1. Right? So this squared plus that squared square root. Yep. Now, what is cosine squared of y. Well, cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. This is the adjacent. That's hypotenuse. So cosine of y is adjacent. Is, yes, it's 1 over that. 1 over the square root of x squared plus 1. So cosine squared of y, 1 squared is 1. Square root squared is over x squared plus 1. So that's equal to 1 over x squared plus 1, which is the derivative of inverse tangent. So the derivative of inverse tangent, y prime, is 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, so, um, yeah, and that's the formula for the derivative of the inverse tangent of x. So y prime, if we know y, then y prime is 1 over x squared plus 1. We can do the same thing for cosine. We can do the same thing for secant. We can do the same thing for secant squared. Uh, secant squared for cosecant to find the derivatives of all the inverse trig functions. It's all by using implicit differentiation, which is awesome. It's a great use for implicit differentiation. Um, the book has examples of doing these also, um, and they have a chart with all of them, so I'll show that to you here. Um, so you can look this up. Again, this is section 3.5. And they have a table of all the derivatives of the inverse functions, which you should know, um, know how to find this. Or of course, you can always Google it or something too. But um, yeah, so these are the derivatives of the inverse. We already figured out inverse sine, 1 over square root. We did inverse tangent, 1 over 1 plus. Uh, notice the derivative of inverse cosine is just negative what inverse sine is. You just put a minus, it's exactly the same thing, 1 minus x squared, but a negative sine. So if you know sine, if you memorize that, you know cosine, it's just negative. Tangent is 1 plus x squared, pretty different, no square roots. And then here's the cosecant, secant ones, there's x's and stuff. Uh, notice, by the way, in tangent and cotangent is just negative. So it's really cool. Sine and cosine are negatives of each other, and tangent and cotangent are negatives of each other. And then these are a little bit weird, they have x's in them on the bottom. But they're also negatives of each other. Just look them up if you can't remember them. All right, good. That's how you find the derivatives of the inverse trigonometric functions. Awesome. Thanks for listening.